Yo, what's going on you savages here on a Thursday evening, Friday morning, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, what do we got going here? A little SEC news this evening. Uh, Kenny G is relocating. I kind of figured that by his, uh, it's been what, six, seven, eight months since he came out and talked about Chicago, my beloved Chicago, this, that, the other thing. But you could tell he had a butt full of it back then. Now he's relocating to beautiful Miami, Florida. Maybe it was the... Uh, COVID lockdown where they uh, gutted the entire half the city, it sounded like, and put in those fiber optic cables in that hotel room. Maybe that had a little change of, uh, of scenery. Plus, Chicago, uh, God bless the fine folks of Chicago. That is an absolute war zone over there. Kenny G, we'll touch on that son of a gun here too. Uh, S&P 500 was about 75% green on the day. Uh, AMC down a little bit. GameStop up a tiny bit. Uh, kind of what we figured was going on here, right? Uh, let's touch on this Kenny G right out of the gate here. Uh, I did see the mayor of Chicago go out and send a tweet out today uh, praising Ken Griffin, this, that, the other thing. Miami is, you know, welcome such a great man. No, you're going to miss the, the massive amounts of tax money that you get from Mr. Ken Griffin is is pretty much what you're saying there or a thank you to mr kenny g but let's listen to this turd this is from uh wgn9 in chicago illinois here take it a quick listen business community illinois richest man ken griffin announces plans to relocate his head fund headquarters to miami today's announcement follows griffin's complaints about surging crimes in the city wgn's julian cruz joins us live from citadel's dearborn offices julian well, Mike and Ray, you may remember back in the spring during a Wall Street Journal interview, Ken Griffin complaining about Chicago's crime rate and hinting that he may be ready to move Citadel out of Illinois. Citadel, the third major company in the last few weeks following Boeing and Caterpillar to announce that they are leaving the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois. I'm proud that they will be working together. Citadel CEO Ken Griffin in a written message breaking the news to Chicago employees at the company's 131 South Dearborn offices. I am excited to have recently moved to Miami, the message reads, with my family and look forward to rapidly expanding Citadel in a city so rich in diversity and abounding with energy. The announcement, not a surprise to many, relocates two company divisions, Citadel and Citadel Securities, to Florida with hundreds of jobs, creating a new global headquarters in Miami while maintaining a smaller office in Chicago, spokespeople say. Sterling Bay, in the process of developing the sprawling Lincoln Yards development in Chicago, now partnering with Citadel in Miami, according to a press release, to build a tower on Brickell Bay. What's interesting about this one is the odd mix of politics and finance in one story. Greg Hines with Chicago Cranes Business says they're like cats and dogs. Governor J.B. Pritzker, a Democrat, with Griffin, the Republican, publicly clashing over crime and corporate taxes through the years. Griffin reportedly putting up $50 million to support potential Pritzker opponent, the GOP's Richard Irvin, in the upcoming primaries. But rivalries and politics as side, Hines says concerns over crime in Chicago are very real. The reasons that Citadel gave for the departure are consistent with what we cranes are hearing from other people uh, in the in the uh, in the business space, and that is that uh, Chicago's still untamed crime problem. In a written statement, the governor's spokespeople saying, quote, countless companies are choosing Illinois as their home as we continue to lead the nation in corporate relocations and had a record number of business startups in the past year. The mayor's office expressing disappointment over Citadel's announcement, saying, quote, we know Citadel will maintain a significant presence in Chicago and their story would not have been possible without the great strengths of our city. There's no minimizing the loss of tax revenues, experts say. Then there's the philanthropy. Griffin and his Citadel company are among the most generous philanthropists in the country and here in Illinois. And Let me ask you a question. Who hired this guy here, Monotone Mike? Listen to this guy's voice. In the city of Chicago, Griffin himself said to have contributed more than $600 million to charitable causes. In the loop, Julian Cruz... Julian Cruz, monotone Mike. 
Wow, so Kenny G packing it up, leaving a little bit uh, behind there in Chicago. Just like the rest of the world, he's got shit lined up every single place. Maybe it wasn't the mayor that sent that praise. I wish I would have pulled that tweet up. It was somebody in uh, Chicago. It had one of those little check mark thingies. They were some sort of something. Who knows? But that, who gives a rat's ass? So, Kenny, uh, best of luck down there, sir. S&P 500, 80% green, 75% green, green, green. Uh, yeah. There's your beloved AMC stock today, shorted to shit, as you can see. $12.02 after hours, 12.05 down, five, whatever you want to call it, five, 4.8 something percent. Who gives a rat's ass, right? We are waiting for a squeeze, folks. This is not it. GME up a little bit today, 2.57 down a tiny bit in after hours, 142.02 and 141 on the button. Is it me or watching GameStop for the last 15, 16 months, whatever it's been? Why does GameStop always end on round numbers 141 exactly i can't tell you how many times this thing ends up on an exacto number i'm going to try to pull up that uh data if i can i'm too stupid never mind uh cost of borrow is the main reason why i pulled up the old stonko tracker 18.2 percent we got 55 a double nickel 55,000 in the till for the morning gamestop i believe is at 33.33 still ish 33.3, 20,000 in the uh, chamber for tomorrow. Boobs up tracker, 2.285 trilly. Nothing changed there, folks. Continuing to climb. What's the over under on th uh, three bill or three trill? Uh, 1231 of 02. Okay, we'll set the line at 1231.02. Uh, bullish as all get up here. GME Director's Performance Based Compensation came in stock awards, not cash. GameStop proposal for compensation. Its non-employee directors was recently approved during the annual shareholder meeting. The proposal by GameStop's board led by chair Ryan Cohen determines fiscal year 2021 compensation on stock awards, and it should pressure insiders to deliver top level performance to further enhance the company's share price. Yes, it will. Good job, RC. During GameStop's annual shareholder meeting, compensation for non-employee directors was approved. The time the company board decided to reduce the amount of blah, blah, blahs. We already kind of read that. Each elected director will receive only one restricted unit, RSU, in respect to the number of shares divided by 200,000 at an average closing price of GME stock in 30 trading days before the annual meeting. I love it. I absolutely love it. Facebook, Netflix, and PayPal are value stocks now. The reason I bring this up here, GameStop, is a little mention in here. Among the stocks that move are former darlings, Meta, Platforms, Inc., the parent of Facebook, Netflix, PayPal Holdings, blah, blah, blah. All three jump into the Russell 1000 value index and their ways in the Russell 1000 growth index will dwindle. GameStop, GME. Plus 2.57% we just touched on. Another favorite among individual investors will make the same trip through it will lose its place in the growth index. Ryan Cohen, the mad genius, doing nothing but building this company into another outstanding chewy type situation. I love Ryan Cohen. Fed Reserve, here is a absolute turd BS j Powell pumping a millions, trillions, billions, whatever you want to call it, money into the economy is the reason why the annual stress test is uh, very well here, they, they throw in. June 23rd of 2022, Fed Reserve Board releases release an annual bank stress test, which shows the banks continue to have strong capital levels, allowing them to continue lending to households and businesses during a severe recession. Tell me that doesn't make sense. The Federal Reserve Board on Thursday released the results of the annual bank stress test, which showed the banks continue to have strong capital levels, allowing them to continue to lend households and business during a severe recession. All banks tested remain above the minimum capital requirements despite total projected losses of $612 billion. Under stress, the aggregate common a equity capital ratio, which provides a cushion against loss, is predicted as declined by 2.7%. <sighs> you guys, 
So much mummy pumped into this thing. This whole thing is just an absolute BS shit show. It really, honest to God, is. You know it. Um, this was great. Massive margin call fallout. You know, you go into something like that. Stress test, everything's fine. I'm so sick of reading articles where everything's fine, everything's shot to shit. Elon this, that, the other thing. I forgot about that Elon article I was going to pull up. I'm going to post it in the comments that uh, I was talking about. It, it just makes me disgusted. This whole news media is an absolute shit show. Speaking of shit shows, hang on here. Well, I'm going to say something that our management won't like, so if any of our bosses are listening... <laughs> Mute the volume. How does a firm amass such big positions synthetically? And I'll give you uh, an I'll give you an extra order of tater tots if you throw in contracts for difference and or total return swaps into your answer. Yeah. Every quarter we talk about these 13 <laughs> Fs. We call it whale watching. We look at you know the big funds SEC filings on what they hold. I'm not saying they're not worth looking at. But here's the reality of the modern Wall Street. A lot of those positions might be fake positions or dummy positions to mask trades that are exactly the opposite, i.e., you own some of the actual equity, but you are synthetically short. Or what I mentioned earlier, contracts for differences, which are swaps, ways to bet against things synthetically. You don't own anything. You're betting on a move. You can be paid up front. By the way, those are illegal in the United States. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's not something that hedge funds are new to. They have had to file 13 Fs for, I think, decades at this point. Um, and so they figured out what happens when you disclose a certain type of position, a certain size of position. People catch on to it. They <laughs> well, when I was at CNBC, they taught us not to overcomplicate things on the air. So I'll just say this whole situation to me is like a string of are you effing kidding me? What got Melvin Capital into trouble, I guess, is that they had to report ownership of put options, which effectively told the market we're, we're uh, massively short these stocks. <laughs> <laughs> Friggin' outstanding. Shout out to Apple State 2020 for finding that little gem, putting that thing together. Yeah, you guys, everything's rigged. The market's rigged, as we know, as we found out. I'm so sick of sitting and feeling like a little tiny fish at the bottom of the ocean trying to grab little bits and pieces and nuggets of this market. I'm so sick of the media and their BS and these Fed stress tests. Fake crap. This thing's going to crash like a son of a gun. The, the real stats... We know, we've seen them, the data out there, it doesn't lie. It, all the numbers don't lie. We took this thing back to 1909 the other night when we talked about all the, the major bear market uh, dates for 100 plus years. Come on, man. Come on. Okay. Stock swinger rant's over. Okay, guys, Friday, the end of the week is tomorrow. Let's see what in the hell happens tomorrow. We're not even going to guess. We don't have a clue. Uh, markets grain, AMC, GameStop is down. That's probably what's going to happen. Okay, guys, love you. Have a good evening or a good day if you're watching tomorrow or uh, Friday, I mean, and we'll see you later.